Now, Jack Carr is the author of The Terminalist, now a hit show on Amazon Prime. He's also a former Navy SEAL veteran who served in Afghanistan. Jack, it's so good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. I know you have some thoughts and feelings, especially as we look at what happened one year ago. I do, and as does every person who went over there and uh, put their life on the line, and some who returned home facing the, uh, uh, the physical and the emotional trauma of their experience over there. But we learned early on in special operations in particular to not rush to your death. And uh, that means to take a breath, look around, make a good, thoughtful call for those on your left and right. That's what you owe them. That's what you owe their families. That's what you owe the mission. And instead, what happened at a strategic level as we got down to these final days in Afghanistan is we rushed to our death. And that's why so many Americans who never had any touch point with the military whatsoever could apply a bit of common sense to what they were seeing on television and start asking questions. Why did we give up Bagram? Why did we put our uh, service members at a tactically disadvantageous position at the Kabul airport, uh, which resulted, unfortunately, in uh, those deaths at Abbey Gate? Uh, and to say nothing of those who are uh, still dealing with those, uh, the, the, the physical wounds of that day and the emotional wounds of that day. Uh, we rushed to our death. At the end, it was unnecessary. We had 20 years to learn lessons, and we neglected to do that. We didn't even go back to the Soviet experience in Afghanistan. We didn't go back to the British experience. We didn't, go, we didn't even have to go back to Genghis Khan or Alexander the Great. We had our own 20 years of experience in Afghanistan, and we neglected to apply those lessons to our withdrawal, and it really is unforgivable, as is uh, the, the accountability. We have seen over that 20 years zero accountability from our senior leaders, uh, and that continues to this day. They have all failed upward. Yeah, Jack, I know you've, you've spoken and, and written a lot about this and about how, uh, especially in recent history, and you're a student of history and, and a prolific reader and author, how uh, general officers are no longer held accountable. As you say, they are promoted upward. Uh, what do you say to the families who are looking for that accountability as we wrap up here? Well, that's what we owe, not just those families, but future generations as well. If we fail to take these lessons and apply those lessons going forward as wisdom, uh, then those deaths have been in vain. Uh, so we, that's what we really owe them, is to apply those lessons going forward as wisdom. But we can look back. We can look back to what was our country like before 1947 and after 1947. Uh, we stopped holding our senior military leaders accountable for whatever reason after World War II. George Marshall did it before World War II, all through World War II, put those generals and admirals, all those names that we know today as those who led us to victory, we all know those names. After World War II, we stopped firing those admirals and those generals who didn't measure up for whatever reason, and that continues today. And that's going to have to change if we want the populace, the citizens, to trust in our military leadership. And, and the results speak for themselves. Jack, thank you for your service, your leadership, and your voice. I appreciate it. Thanks for joining us. Subscribe to the Fox News YouTube channel to catch our nightly opens, stories that are changing the world and changing your life. I'm Tucker Carlson tonight.